All right. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Joy Lajre, and I have with me Shorty McMillan, and he is a booker, and he will talk to us as short as soon as I give this short shout out to my sponsor, Luscious Moss Studio, owned and operated by Chad Christ in Edgewood, Washington. His studio is set up mostly for drummers and guitarists, and he creates very collaborative, um, creative environment for his his. Uh, people and i'm one of them so i can attest to that with that being said uh if you need to find chat all you have to do is go on facebook and type in luscious my studio and you should be taken to the site all right shorty i am so happy to have you here today <laughs> you are a very interesting man <laughs> and uh, i have a user on here uh, that made a comment, and I'll stop every now and then for comments, but he says, hello, Joy and Shorty, and they didn't tell me who it is. So whoever you are that just made that comment, please tell us who you are, and hello to you back. <laughs> so, Shorty, I was reading your bio, and I was looking at all the things that you did. So how did you ever start out in this music business? It's a long story, but my grandmother was a drummer. Oh, uh, my dad's mother. Uh, she played in a lot of Mexican bands, actually. Um, oh. Hispanic heritage was on her side. Oh, Grandpa right. was also a musician. Who? My dad's That's a musician. Dad. Okay. What my you dad's mean? a guitar player. Family are all like piano lists and guitar players. And <laughs> all my uncles are all guitar players and drummers and singers. And wow, you have yeah, you have a musical family background, right? Okay. I do. So, when did you start picking up an instrument or getting involved? If if you didn't do the instrument part of it, how did you get? Involved? No, I I picked up my first guitar like at five years old. <laughs> you, when? Like five or six years old. Oh my gosh! So you're a musician too? Wow. So you know about us. <laughs> yes, I do. Hi, Michael McMahon. I see you just coming in here telling me your name. And uh, we do want to greet you. <clears throat> Shorty, excuse me, telling, telling us this story about he picked up his guitar when he was five years old. Where did you go from there, Shorty? <laughs> just uh, a long old for music. <laughs> did, you, did you play publicly anywhere? Huh? Did you play publicly anywhere? Not until I got older. What time? When? when approximately when in your life did you do that? No, oh, I don't know. Teenager. <laughs> Teenager. Did you get paid? Nah. Ah, yeah. So I also noticed in there that you um, did some some acting during that time. Is that correct? Yeah. So would you want to share any of that or is that? I was on, yeah, I did like burn farm commercials, like five different skits. Mm. I did, um, yeah, <laughs> did uh, like a cell phone commercial in Taiwan. I did. Oh, cool. So you've had, you've had all of this background and I'm not getting a whole lot of it here. So, uh, it's a, I was also in some films, uh, Okay. I think Big and Tall was one of the latest ones. Uh, Rose Colored Shades is another one. Um, can't remember <laughs> some other ones. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, in all of this, uh, all of this background that you have it, with your family and all, uh, how did you get into the booking? And, and how would you explain what you do? What's a well, book? <laughs> being a booker. Just helping band, my friends' bands get shows, and next thing I know, I <laughs> run clubs. Oh, <laughs> it's a lot of work being a booker. It's not just calling up a couple bands and got the show booked. To call like every band on your list just to get a one show booked, because not every band could do the show. So it's like a lot of phone calling, a lot of networking, a lot. It's been a long time looking for new bands. Yes. They're out there, but it's it, you got to always find new bands and ask them, you know, get them in a few shows. Yeah. I must be part booker because I do the same thing for these interviews. <laughs> and yeah. I, I search high and wide, and sometimes they're, they're willing, sometimes they're not. Um, it all, all depends upon uh, 
the luck of the draw, I guess, whether they want to come on the show or not. And so I get what you're doing there. Yeah. Oh, Being a booker is a lot of work. It's not easy to get. Working for the club, it's like you look at the club and the bands both. So it's you have to look at it a business part for the venue. The venue, they don't care what band you get in there, as long as you take to draw people. That's yeah. all they're looking for is a band that draws people in. And I get a lot of bands come up to me. I would to pack the place out, but then when they go play, they draw nobody or they draw a couple people. And so it's excuses. But, it, you know, it, it happens. Things happen. People can't be forced going out anymore. It's, yeah. Something comes up. You're doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. So your show is, like, either slow, and then the owner is, doesn't like that. Yeah. Find the next guy and come in and do the <laughs> – take the job and bring, take one show before, and then all of a sudden you're done. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. It's tough. It's, it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's like <laughs> – do you have do you have also to deal with um you're kind of caught in the middle you're caught in the middle between the, the client and you're caught in the middle between the bands so. <laughs> it is it, you know I, I love music i love bands i i could get a band play for me they may not be as tight when they first play or they may not be they may be sloppy but i give them another chance because there's always something they got to work on okay. and i'll tell them what they need to work on and they take my advice and just, you know, that show they play, they're even better. I never give up on bands. Never give up on them. Never give up That's on them. That's good to hear, Shorty. <laughs> it's a teamwork. I feel it's a teamwork for everybody. Yes. It, it, it's like it's everybody that needs to be involved. Not just one person. Not just two. It's everybody. <laughs> You know, and I can only do so much that the club allows me to do. <laughs> right. You know, I've seen a couple of your, um, and by the way, hello, Bob Kendrick. Kendrick, we see you here. here you're going to be doing a show at Casey's. Um, and, and Lori Hardman says, uh, uh, oh, hello, Miss Lori. I'm not sure who said that. But anyway, um, you're good. he's going to do a show for you at Casey's, correct? Bob Ketter? Yes, Bob Milby. So, and I, I have a show coming up um, for a showcase uh, at Vessel's Tap House as well. So, uh, yep. yeah, you connected so us. Uh, and and I, um, I watched your show at Casey's when it was Kira Michelle, who's a singer-songwriter down south in the Tacoma area. And uh, it, it was moving bands in and out, like about every 45 minutes. And I, I was looking at that thinking, oh, my goodness, that is a lot. I don't know. It was a coordinated effort. I didn't yeah, see it. Yeah, pretty well. good. It, All the bands are on time. It doesn't yeah. take as long for them to set up. So. And the and load in and the loadout. Now, that, I know, comes from being, um, as far as I understand, you were roadie. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I worked with a lot of bands, so. So how many do you think you were? Um, how how many think you were uh, a roadie for? Just off the cuff. A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, we worked for both my husband and I, Kurt. We worked for um, Rhino. I don't know if you remember Rhino. I know Rhino. Yeah, I've heard of it. Arizona. Rhino. Yeah, and I used to I used to lure those big and fold those cords and do all that heavy work and oh my gosh out at the gorge it was like oh I'd be so tired at night I just want to die not sleep. <laughs> I perform at the gorge a bunch. Do you? Yeah. Oh my doing. gosh, what a place! Doing Super Geek League and we were playing there and I was doing um, as a dancer for the raves and stuff too. Yeah, that's quite an outfit, and and I never, you know, it took. Sometimes they'd have six semis full of stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> and you need a crew to load all that out, load it in, and it didn't go as fast as yours. But I would suspect that your your experience with having done that helped to do what you do now. Now, is that like all of your concerts work that way, or how does that how does that happen? Um, you know, bands are pretty good at setting up and tearing down pretty quickly. You know, they get there early enough on loading time, such as the Vessel Tap House. Stage is humid. It's, it's huge. They rebuilt the stage, so it's a lot better. They put it up in the back, so there's a lot more room in the place. 
enough room for all the amps to get back line on stage mm-hmm. for a four or five band and, uh, show. Well, I watched a show there. I was there about two weeks ago, and uh, I was I was waiting for one particular band to go up there, and uh, I was watching the activity on stage, and it was like within minutes, one band was out, and the next one was in, and they sounded great. This that sound man knows what he's doing. Yeah, and um, you know, since it's a large venue, it takes a lot of people, which takes a lot of. Um, I think a lot of people go in that place. So not just one or two bands can fill the place. So I do five bands, and it's because um, if one band drops off or two bands drop off the day of the show, then I got three to work with. If I had a three-band lineup, one or two is going to drop off to one band to work with for the night. doesn't cut it out for a venue. Okay. Got to have people there. Okay, so I don't think I'm understanding this. So do you ever have a band up? for several hours or is it always this uh, bring on everyone in about 45 minutes or whatever it was? Well, it depends on the bands. If I have, if I'm working with like um, a band I know can draw people like a tribute band or a mm-hmm. cover yeah. band that I know can draw people in, I could do, I like to do a couple openers. Mm-hmm. Uh, that way, if they did have to drop out because of COVID or something drastically right. happens, I got two other bands to work with. I don't have to struggle the day of trying to find a replacement band. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I, I don't know. I have, I was in a band. I had a band for 15 years, starting in 2000, 2015, called Gold Rush Fever. And I, I used a booker to get out on the peninsula and, um, she was great. I, I, and wouldn't you just know it? She died it's very suddenly. She, yeah. she was taken off the face of the earth, and the person who took over for her was not a good booker. <laughs> it was, yeah, we, we, it's we, a lot of work. Oh yeah. Well, we it's had stressful. we had our we had our rounds and round and round, but he never. We had we had uh, which is going to lead me into the next question, but. We had an agreement with her, which was based on a handshake, another verbal. We didn't have a contract with her. And the idea was to get, you know, her money to her by by using her as a booker and to get us in the places that we wanted to be seen. And she was great. And and I never used a booker after that because of what happened to me. But um, I do see I do see a need. So can you tell me that part of the 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 job that you do as far as uh, how, how do you, um, do you use a contract? Do you use a, a handshake? I mean, what, what is that and how does it work? Well, okay. It depends if, um, if a band wants to do an agreement with me, a, a contract, a written contract, maybe sure they want to get paid or whatever the situation is, I'll do it. I'll mm-hmm. have no problem signing a contract. The only what I do is I just contact a band on, Facebook or internet, send them a message um, or text message or whatever. And to confirm up the show, I'll confirm it right there. Yeah. No need to meet me for a contract sign. Unless they feel comfortable and have one signed, then I'll do it. Yeah. I, I think that, um, you know, if I were, if I were going to go, like, say, to Texas, I understand that you've got some gigs that you're working on in that area. I, I'm, start, I'm going to be starting up at something in Texas. Not yet. It's not confirmed yet. Okay. I'm waiting for the confirmation on there. We're hoping, 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 right? <laughs> can't see my fingers crossed. I can't seem to get, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, you know, if I, I personally, um, coming from, from an artist standpoint of it, art musician part of it, if I had to go out of state, I, I might be a little bit more hesitant to just use an agreement because you're, you know, there's a lot of costs involved in traveling. you got, a place to stay, food, travel, etc. So, under those circumstances, um, is that when you use contracts, or do you still do that verbally? Well, I'm, I'll be finding bands in the, that area that be booking in, unless there's a band that's touring and they want to go to a yeah. show in Texas because they're touring. That's a different story. They should have much going on tour for a band. So, look at it as like a vacation. Unless they're a side band, they have a big, big, huge following. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, it's meant to get paid. Of course, if you can make an agreement with the venues to pay the band if they're on tour, they need money for gas. 
lodging, food. We know how expensive that gets. Right. We, we all know that. I understand that. So they need a, I have to get a hold of the club and see how much they're willing to pay the band and let them go down there to perform. And they may, you know, oh yeah, we could do that. That's fine. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, but I recommend for the bands to have merch to help get them by. Yeah, I hear that. that and is if they're on tour anyways, it's no big deal because they got to go through that state anyway to play a show if they're on tour. What about a place a little closer to home? Like, say, for instance, um, it, it, Oregon. I'm mean, a lot of us, a lot of the people that, not me, uh, a lot of the people that I, I talk with do gigs in that area. Um, is that the same deal as, as Texas? They have to, are you just taking them, the bands in Oregon or do we cross borders or how does that work? Well, if a band wants to play there, I can set them up to play over there. Um, a new place called, um, well, at the, at the bar I'm picked up that I'm going to be booking at called Root 30 Bottles of Beer. How, what is that the, again? It, Say that again, Richard. Yeah, Root, Root 30 Bottles of Beer. It's a bar. <laughs> it's a torment over bar. It's in the Dallas. So I will be bringing show. I'm bringing shows over there too. Bands are right. there um, on certain dates. The owner will, you know, we negotiate the bands how much they want. And then we go from there. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, that sounds so interesting. I and I do I do have a good show coming up. I just booked a really good band to play at Casey's Bar in Kent on the 27th of May and the 29th at the Vessel Tap House. It's um they are called Future Leaders of the World, hmm. uh, which they've been they were really Really popular. Um, they're playing two shows in a row. So, what kind of music do they do? Rock, oh, almost like you know the rock. Um, kind of hard to describe. I guess they're like you know the new rock. I guess you know like Corn, Lincoln Park, that kind of old style. Uh huh. But really good stuff. Very good singer. Well, I I've never heard of them. I, maybe I need to look them up. I'll have to talk to you about getting that. Maybe I can get them on my program. So with all of this being said and getting some idea about what you do and how you go about booking, uh, what were you, <laughs> obviously things are just crazy around here during COVID and so many musicians had nothing to do. So they turned to streaming, they turned to production. I'm getting a feedback here. Yeah, I don't know if other people are hearing this feedback. Is some is her phone on or, or something short? No, yeah, it looks good. I can hear. Okay. Um, I'm getting feedback, but I don't know why. Anyway, um what did you do during COVID during all that craziness when they shut everybody down? Well, I, I kept on doing my other little job, genealogist. Oh. I'm uh, I studying genealogy, DNA and all that. Yeah. That's what I did during the whole COVID. Oh, so you trace you trace people's backgrounds back their roots back into wherever it is that they started from. Yep. Oh, that sounds interesting. So were you doing any booking at all during that period of time? No. Um a little bit of my house parties. Not yeah. Not really anything too extreme. You know, a few people at my house with a couple bands and uh, backyard barbecues or Chelsea Hawk parties, you know, at yeah. my house I was living at before. I <laughs> got it. So one of the things I was thinking about after we were talking about, you know, what it is you do at, as a booker, I was wondering um, what, how do you, you always, do you always have a backup band that you call? I mean, what do you do when a band doesn't show up? How do you handle that? Just deal with the night, I guess. <laughs> make, make, just have the other bands play. Oh, so you have, so at these venues, I noticed the one that was at Casey's that you had all these backup people that came in and, and had their slot to play or whatever. And I'm sure you could extend it. You could have extended that. Um, 
if you'd wanted to, if somebody hadn't shown up, correct? Is that how you run all your venues so that you have a standby band or I'm, I'm not understanding how that works? No, um, say like the day of the show and I have a three band lineup or a five band lineup and the day of the show, when the bands don't show up, then I got four bands to work with. Ah, so you yeah. can cover that. Sorry. Okay. So we had a question here, and I don't know if you want to share. I mean, you you only have to answer their question to what you feel comfortable doing. But this um, person signed in and says, how much do you charge to search someone's genealogy? You know what? I just help them. I don't even... I negotiate. I I work with their budget. If they if they don't have no money to pay me, I don't care. Just I just do it. Just help them. I help them get started on it. Then. All right. Well, I I've never done that. Um, I I know some of my family history. Hold on a minute. Uh, I know some of my family history because you know we were all kind of interested where we came from. Um. And I, it is a very interesting uh, uh, side job or <laughs> interest, whatever. But um, I've never been able to go back very far. I just managed to go back, back my on my mother's side. My grandfather is from Austria. So I've never been able to go back uh, further than the turn of the century. So uh, I, I've always thought about it, but I never did it. I'll be glad to help you on that. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> oh, well, so anyway. I'll work. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet it is. I, I just trying to do it online and, and figure out. I mean, so many of these places you have to pay it, you have to pay to get information. I, I'm on ancestry.com. I do pay yeah. for that. I pay it by the year or half a year. Um, I'm on familysearch.org. That's a free site. Um, I got my heritage. I got paid for that one. I'm going to like four different sites. Yeah. Wow. So how, what got you interested in that, Shorty? Oh, long story. Long story. It's a long story where I was living at. I was in my living room, cleaning my living room, doing my bong hits, smoking my weed in the morning, cleaning my front room. I get a knock on the door. Some missionaries are Mormons. I bite them in. I'm sitting there smoking my pot, my bong hits. Oh, they're in there. And I, I tell them I'm not really, you know, interested in their religion because I'm not. I'm, uh, I, I'm natural. I'm spiritual. I believe in something different. But I don't care. Believe whatever you want. I'm very open on anybody's beliefs. <laughs> and I tell them I'm not interested. But they were asking me if I ever wanted to know about my family history. I'm like, yeah. They gave me a card. To do my tree for free, familysearch.org. Uh, so um, that was back in May, last May, or yeah. back in May. That was back in 2014. I left, did a bunch of uh, touring around, doing a bunch of gigs and stuff for the band I was in. I'm, I'm doing, but we're on hiatus at the moment. You, you uh, what? I'm sorry, what was that last comment? The, the band I was in, the band I'm in. Yeah. We're on hiatus right now. We're not doing anything at the okay. moment. All right. Super Geek League. It's the name of the band. Ah. And um, I got back in August and I started doing my family tree and I learned <laughs> that's how I got it started. <laughs> so what did, uh, I'm not going to ask you what you found, but were you re were you happy with the results? Did it show some, did it give you some idea of your roots? Yeah, well, I actually just uncovered my um, my McMillan family. Yeah, yeah. I, you mentioned that one of your relatives were was um, uh, from maybe Spain or Latin America, uh, South America. Yeah. Yes, my my dad's paternal side were Scottish and Irish. Wow. And Welsh. His mother's side, Spain, Portugal, Africa, France. My native too, because you know, right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, kind of a lot of brands in there, <laughs> a lot of different family ties to different countries. Yeah, and then my mom is Scottish and Irish. Yeah, that's cool. So, do you do any Irish gigs when you were in your huh? band? 
Doing what? And did you do any Irish type music when you were in your band? Or is it strictly rock? It what, what kind no, of the, oh no the, the band no it's yeah. um it's um the band was um sci fi punk metal full band with circus performers. Circus performers. Oh that's I'm one of the circus performers. Oh so what do you do? What do you do? Well we have acrobats on stage, we have jugglers, we have um, dancers, crowd hypers. Um, I'll get thrown out the out into the crowd in a gerbil ball at the Gorgon Amphitheater. Oh my gosh. That sounds like fun. So and there's music, bands playing music to all this? Yeah. All right. Wow. Getting back to what we were talking about earlier about the bands, um, one of the questions that I came up with is, you know, how how does this affect your your person? You know, you seem to be a very confident person, but how does this how does this affect you sometimes? I mean, I just getting one band, mine at the time, booked and and getting all of this stuff going and setting up literally drove me crazy. And then there's a lot of work to this. I mean, it, it, this is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> so how do you how do you survive mentally? Physically? Just stay positive. Honey. That's all I got to do. Yeah. Just stay positive. You can't bring yourself down. Just and it, just got to keep stay positive. Just move forward. You know, yeah. just keep keep moving forward. Just keep yeah. doing it. Don't Absolutely. let nothing stop you. Good advice. Good advice, Shorty. Yeah, I think um, I have yet, I don't think I've ever seen, I can remember back when uh, Casey's was, I don't know what it was called back then, but it was a karaoke bar, because I used to do karaoke there, and that's when I first saw you. I don't know what you what you were doing at the time, uh, but that was when we first met, and I oh, can't, okay. I can't remember you ever not having a smile on your face. <laughs> I, that, love I just love people. Yeah, I'm a people person. And you got to be a people person working in the music business. Absolutely. And I've learned, I learned being in the business, you have to enjoy all styles of people, all styles of music, because that's the only way you're going to create something. That's the only way you're going to have a lot of friends. And just, you got to enjoy it. You got to enjoy everybody. Because you can't just book on style. It, it just, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's my choice. I mean, I love music, period. So <laughs> any kind, right? Yeah. Any genre. Yeah. That's what I thought. So um I'm gonna ask you a really personal question. Uh you don't have to answer. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we we everybody I think that's been in the music business has run into some bad situation. I can remember one of the uh one of the uh Oh, what were they called? Um, ah, I can't remember. Eagle Elks or one of those, and and they actually double booked. And uh, so we yeah. got, we started setting up, and this other band came in, and they said, "I'm sorry, but we're the band for the night." <laughs> and we're like, "What?" <laughs> so, have you um, ever had to encounter a situation I've, with that? I've had that happen. I've had that happen. You had to have. I had a club owner that booked bands and told me the night was open, that he needed bands. So I booked bands, and he didn't tell me that he had the, he had bands booked until I showed up with my bands. It was a it was very upsetting for the bands. They didn't understand. They were mad at me. It was my fault. Yes. But it wasn't. It was actually the club's owner's fault. But a lot of bands don't really see it, the owner's fault and stuff. And plus, you know, things happen. Club owners have a lot going on too. You know, they have they have a bar they're running. They have so much on their minds. It, it happens. This communication happens all the time on everybody's part, not just one part. You know, but when you just oh, it happens. Let's just move on to the next. Move <laughs> forward. Let's make the next night better. And see what you can do. To make have those bands be happy. Right. You know. So it. I've had a show where. The owner was stressing. It was like two days before the show. The night the owner had, you know, it was some other person that booked the show and they dropped out two days before the gig. So 
Everybody's calling around to get bands booked. So it's at the Bell Firehouse. We end up with like seven bands that night. The owner booked bands. I booked bands. Somebody else booked bands. We end up having seven bands. They're all different styles. But you know what? It worked. People showed up, and it was a good time. And that's all that mattered. <laughs> there you go. The first question <clears throat> I wanted to ask you is, you know, everybody, uh, there are people in the business that are not upright. They're not honest. And, and I hate yeah. to say that, but there are some because musicians are a big family. And we have musicians all over the world. But in this area, everybody, even if their genres are different, they are still part of the, music, the musician family. Exactly. So what would you, how would you characterize yourself as far as your honesty and, and how you've been um, accepted, like your credentials? I mean, have bands... What bands are, have there been bands that um, that say, wow, this is great. We had a great experience with Shorty. Do you do you consider yourself an above board, honest person? I am. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I'd be, I'm really honest with the bands of people. I'm not going to lie to nobody. I, I would be honest with them. If a band doesn't draw people, I'll tell them. Nobody, you guys didn't draw nobody. Yeah. You know, and I'll tell them. And they get upset, but hey, you know, I can't draw, you can't draw, don't. You know, <laughs> expect a lot if you can't draw people and right. and stuff. It, it's it's a tough business. It's not, you know, it, it's nice to be favorites. It's a love to be. I love to make everybody happy because that's, that's what I like, right? That's right. But it's hard to make everybody happy when you got like a show and there's three people there. The sound has to get paid. Yeah. It, it just it's it's really a struggle. It really can be. Absolutely, I and it, it could be it could be upsetting for the bands too, because they don't draw. There's nobody there. They don't get paid, or there's, they're not playing in front of people, and yeah. it, it, it does get them upsetting. It does. It, it's not a nice, you know. It's not cool for anybody, no. really. So, just gotta move forward and make the next show better. That's how I see it. So, in the case of like, you know, that my genre is country, and Rock is still something that my mind can't grasp. <laughs> so, okay. and you know, I've been playing jams with Lynn Sorensen, of course, you know him, and he he's a bass player and and he does rock, and he does everything, but that's you know his primary genre. And uh, I've noticed that not only uh, is writing rock rockers use a different format for songwriting. And the licks and the mode is entirely different than country. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in this area, it seems um, that rock bands are are everywhere. I mean, no matter where you go, they're playing some form of rock at some point in time. And I know in other places, country is uh, beginning to catch on again. I mean, there for a while, there was kind of pushed out in the background. And now I understand it's coming back again. Um, what is your thoughts about country bands? And, and uh, there's different, you know, there's traditional country that are some of the older stuff. And there's some more new, uh, newer country in the 80s, 90s, and 2000. And then there's a whole different genre of these new country people that are out there. Well, I like country. I like all music. Talent is talent. It doesn't matter what style you are. It's yeah. talent. All right? I'll listen to everything. I'm not so much on the new country like on the radio. I'm going to see it live. It's great. I'm going to see it live. It's, it's awesome. Right. Exactly. You know, it, it's great. It's all about the show. And I love live stuff. So do you think, uh, have you placed any country bands in the, since this COVID uh, started opening up, the whole venue has started opening up for bands? Yeah, I did a, um, a country show. I, did, I had a country band play for me. Really good. Nonstop to Nashville. Very good band. Wow. Wow. And um, yeah, and then now they've been playing the vessel now and then. Yeah. And they're really a good band. They got a good draw. They're very nice people. Great music. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, I also heard, uh, I think the, la the lady that uh, I interviewed uh, on here not too long ago, and I've got a lot of comments here. It says, hi to Lori. So Lori Hardman must be watching us. Um, no, I forgot my question. Well, there you go. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Hi, Lori, if you're there. <laughs> anyway, she was saying, um, well, I also know Ronnie Lee a little bit because I jammed with her at, at one of Lynn's jams. And uh, I understand she went to the vessel, and the rumors I'm hearing about the vessels is this. That's a great place, and musicians are hoping to get in there. Uh, can you address that? Would you agree with that? I agree. I, I want to see all the musicians there that play shows and bands play shows there. Um, yeah, I, I encourage them to get a hold of me. No, no um, there was a, a, a um, something put in uh, about the upcoming event that you you were asking for singer songwriters to play at yeah play in and <laughs> i don't know about this but i i said okay me <laughs> when you let me know about it and um i'm wondering what that's all about what are, what are they wanting there and what are they hoping for in the future if anything um well we want people there of course well what i'm going to do is on june 4th there's going to be two stages. In the main room, I'm going to have three bands to play in the main room. Okay. And there are punk bands, kind of like punk and rock bands. And then in the ballroom, there's going to be a no-covered charge, and it's a singer, songwriter, acoustic showcase. And everybody does a 20-minute set. And that way, there's a bunch in there. Everybody brings a few people. That bar will be packed with people. Makes it more of a good atmosphere for everybody because there's people there. And then in the main room, hopefully we get people in the main room for the show in there with the bands, which I think we will. It's called Brock. And um, so they're going to do good. So well, combine I, it all and make more people in the place. Well, this is, I, I think it's a good opportunity for singer songwriters just starting out. And I know a handful of them or more uh, that are trying to get started. I had, I had one band called Minimum Wage. They're great guys. They're four guys. And I hit the wrong darn button. So when it came, when it came to putting them on the stream, there was nothing. So they lost their, they lost it. And I lost a four, but they're great band. And, they're just starting out and, you know, a venue like yours would be a great place for them to get, to get noticed. And, they, and they're really good. I think they're good players, but, mm -hmm. and uh, also singer songwriters that are out there uh, that are listening uh, that, you know, whether you're established or whether you're not um, getting a venue where you can show people what you have is far and few between. So I think that, um, I see it as an opportunity. So just the shout out. In all of your experiences working with bands and working with managers of clubs and so forth, hey, have you ever had anything that just stood out in your mind and you said, oh my gosh, that's a revelation? Or has it been a lot of that or or just one thing or you know, kind of an aha moment type thing? What do you mean? Well, you know, yeah. Have you ever been in a venue where it was just such a just such a great time, a great place that you said, oh, my gosh, I had glad I had this experience. Oh, yeah. I I enjoy going anywhere there's music, regardless <laughs> of the venue, just as long as there's music. <laughs> That's all matters. <laughs> it's all good, right? I put on shows at a Chinese restaurant. I've had punk shows. I've had <laughs> punk and metal shows in an African restaurant called the Zobias in Seattle. Before. Oh, my gosh. I've had... I've had shows in a Denny's restaurant inside the bar room before. I've had shows anywhere. I don't care where. <laughs> Mexican well, restaurants, I'll put bands in. I don't care. <laughs> all right. So do you have to, in order to be a booker, uh, what do you, I mean, I'll care Michelle is booking. Um, I haven't, I don't go to the South End a whole lot. Uh, that's where I started out. So I'm up here carving a new niche up north. <laughs> And, Tyler Michelle's an awesome musician. She's very awesome. Yeah, she really can belt out a song. <laughs> she pushes her stuff really good. I like yeah. her promotion yeah. skills. She promotes yeah. herself very well. Absolutely. I took a course from her to learn how to market my music because after I had it all recorded and everything, I thought, okay, now what? 
<laughs> like, where do I go from here? And so I learned a little bit about marketing and not enough. I mean, there's there's always something new, always something more you can be doing. And there are parts of what she taught me. It just, <laughs> it just went over my head. So um, Facebook, I mean, not Facebook, but YouTube is still a mystery to me. But if you wanted to be a booker, how do you, what would you recommend? I mean, how would you, what would you, what advice would you give people listening if they wanted to do it, what Kira's doing and you? Okay. Um, how I see things being a booker, it's a business. You can't, it's a job, it's a business. You can't show up at the venue all loaded on drugs or alcohol. You can't be all, have a couple of drinks, but do it. Smoke a joint if you want to, but don't be strung out on dope. Don't be partying with the bands. Don't. Make, it's a business. You're there for the bands. You're there to for the club. You're there to make sure things are running right and smoothly. You know, not everything's going to go smoothly all the time. Yeah. We're humans. People make mistakes. Yeah. But we have to be there to see what's going on. Always be at the shows. I make my best to be at every show I book. I'm there. Unless I have another show somewhere else. But I try not to do too many shows in one night. I used to do all that years ago. Not no more. <laughs> I like to be at all the shows I book at so I can see how it goes, how the bands do, how they sound, how if people are happy and having a good time. And that, that's a smart thing to do. JJ, you got to get up early in the morning. You can't be just sleeping all day. You got to be up early. You got to make the phone calls. You got to, got, there's so much to do. You can't just blow it off. <laughs> right. It's so a lot you, of work. Are you part it's a of lot of work. I get it. <laughs> do you make the? How do you? Um, how do you get the the advertising out? The, those like right behind you. You've got a poster there. Um, are you responsible for that, or how? Who takes care of that? The club or you? Me. You. <laughs> I have to make sure the flyer gets made. I have to contact the band, see if they can make the flyer. I'm not so good with the computer stuff with flyer making. I'm, I'm just I'm those go out cut and paste like I used to back in the eighties, nineties. But yeah, then you gotta there. get them printed. You gotta get them out on the streets. What you need to gotta get them out on the streets. Still, you can't just sit there on the internet promotion. It doesn't work that way. I've had more successful for people wanting in to the club when they never been there before because they heard about it by seeing a flyer. Hanging up at Safeway or hanging up at a movie for yeah. at Fred Meyer. Yeah. It, yeah, it, that, it works. People think so it don't work. You put, it, them, it you put them out on the street? Yeah. Like into, ah, okay. Fred Meyer's all have a bulletin board. They all oh, let you put a proposal or do it. Yeah. Cost money to do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I hear that. This, this money, many thing. I haven't made money yet. <laughs> so, so I don't know. Money. <laughs> you got to do it for the love, man. You got to do it for the love of music. That's basically it. You got to do it for the love, you know, and you got to also make sure people are in the club, too, because that's the only way the venues can stay open. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a, you know, there, there comes a time in your life, like the name of this matured musician is more about the maturity of the music. In other words, after you've played you know, I have some people that are in their 20s that have already reached that state. I mean, they are just that good. And I'm jealous. But <laughs> the, usually, uh, I would say for the most part, through the years, just like you, you, mm -hmm. you get that experience. <laughs> and, and you have to deal with all this different stuff in, in your music practicing, learning new stuff, doing it on stage, overcoming stage fright, all of that kind of stuff. And it, it, I don't know where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I got lost. I got lost. Anyway, um, it takes a while to get matured. I mean, that music to mature, that music to be tight together and to make something of it. And it seems to me from what I'm finding out there, uh, starting over again, that it's really difficult for, for, um, for us to find leads and, and find people that want to stick together and, and form a band right now. If they're not already in a band, you know, it, they, they have to make that commitment and that's not happening. So 
I think it's rather difficult for um, people who are older uh, in this day and age. What are your thoughts about that? I, I agree. It is old. It is older. Uh, us older people, people that are older, don't go out as much and not going to spend as much money. They can't. They got too much responsibilities at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, while we're on low, um, yeah. like no income or very little income, yes. younger crowd have jobs. They can go out. And spend the money because, you know, the living situation may be different than us. Exactly. So, it, it, that that's that's my fear at this point is, uh, you know, times have changed and and the people that would probably really like the music, uh, are are not out in those clubs. They're not. Um, they don't have the means or whatever. So. I was in a volunteer band uh, in a uh, Bothell area uh, before COVID is shut down now. And we used to go into retirement homes and even um, what well, in the old days we called nursing homes. I don't know what they call them now. And, uh, and we'd play for a couple hours and we had 13 people that played all kinds of different instruments. And these people, I swear to God, it, it was... The most incredible experience. There are people there. There are people there who had Alzheimer's or or dementia, and they come alive. They just come alive. And you know, it's it's hard to reach those people if you're going to a club, and that's that's too bad. So. Yeah, um, I, I find it. Um, what I do is I do a band courtesy musician rule like. My shows, I don't charge bands to come in and see the shows. If they're band members and other bands, they come in my shows for free. I always had that rule for many, many, many years. And I figured because they play for me or they play at the clubs, they don't make much money anyways. So let them get in the shows for free and see their friend's band or That's see right. a band they want to see. So I let them in for free all the time. I don't, yeah. you know. I want everybody in. I don't care if they don't have money. Just come there. I don't care. I'll get you on my list. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, you invited me one day uh, to back to Casey's and told me that. And uh, I thought, wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. So what? Now, you said that you listen to people who do these 20-minute uh, showcases and some of the bands that play and may be a little green <laughs> because of COVID. I mean, many of us haven't played for two years. I mean, basically. Yeah. And so we are green and it does take a little bit of time to get in that groove. So what are you, um, what, what criteria do you um, base what you're seeing and, and the advice that you're giving them as a result? What do you base that on? What do you, what are you looking at? Well, I just like to see what they can do on stage. And uh, like what you just mentioned earlier, a lot, of, a lot of people haven't played out in a long time. Mm -hmm. Let's give them a chance to play in front of a couple of people or in front of people and feel more comfortable back on stage again. Or some of them's never been on a stage before, or never performed mm -hmm. before. So mm -hmm. this is a good opportunity for them to do so. And that way they can work on what they need to work on next time either practice at home or next show, right. prepare for their second show, and then they would be, be better and right. know what they're up for. Got it. All right. That sounds fair. That sounds definitely fair. So in all the times that you've been doing this and you've been working with these bands and telling them what they need to improve and so forth um, for the next time around, uh, what advice would you give singer songwriters that may not have been exposed to playing in front of people? I mean, a lot of us go to jams. That's how we survive. But there are those people that don't. And also young bands are not young in the sense of age of the people, but young bands in the sense that they're just starting out. What advice would you give them? What, what story would you, would you, I mean, what, not story, but, just basically, what advice could you give them to help them? Promote themselves. Not just the shows they, they perform at, but themselves. Yes. Promote who they are. Reach out to everybody they can. Let them know who they are. It doesn't matter 
what style, genre, or somebody has just let them know. For instance, I'll go see our center in the past, like before COVID ended, and I would see hip hoppers out there trying to sell their CDs or give away their CDs or give away a flyer on who they are. And they could do it. Rock bands could do it too. Yeah. Or bands and musicians. Get your stuff out there. Get your music out there. Uh, let people know who you are. That's very important. Absolutely. Uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of these people that are making music that I know uh, say to me, you know, well, I put it out there. I put it on YouTube <laughs> and I'm only getting so many hits. Right. And uh, it marketing doesn't seem to be something that they're prone to do. And yet that is the, I think, the key to the whole thing when you're doing electronic streaming and and uh, these kinds of streaming shows, et cetera. And even in person, now that we get to do that again. And, you know, if you don't market yourself, and I'm still learning, <laughs> if you don't market yourself, you're not going to get where you want to be easily. It's going to be a long, hard ride. But you agree? Yeah, I agree. Okay. So in your, when did you actually have, during this COVID period, when did you actually gear up to start doing what I saw over at Casey's? What was that in the last couple of months, the last year? Uh, I started back last September of Booking yeah. Bands uh, when the vessel owner contacted me and wanted me to. Wow. Book he, he, was, he was in a band I used to book all the time. So he's oh, known me for a long time. Cool. He's a very, you know, he's a really, he's a cool guy. He's just he's really down to earth, you know, and he contacted me and I didn't at first. I'm like, I don't, I walked in and looked at the place. And I loved it. I, okay, I'll try it. Then in December, I, I did like a couple shows there and then I stopped in December to regroup everything. He wanted to re figure out a new format. We had to come up with a different agreement, what we can do to, from my end, a few bands back there again, he contacted me not long ago. So I started back again. Uh, my official date to start back, I have a show on the 4th of June, um, on May 29th, and then June 4th. Got it. I'm mean, getting stuff there. All right. Yeah. I I used to go to Vessels. This is such a crazy story. But Vessels owners um, at that time, and I don't know if they're the same people or not, used to have a place in Woodenville. Yes, same. Yes. Same, and, yes, same place. And they would have, at first, they had song circles. Uh, they had bands come in, too. But they had a song circle where the people um, that I was jamming with all sat in a circle, and we all sing and play. And then it moved upstairs and we still did it. And then, you know, slowly it petered out. And the next thing I know, uh, when I went back to investigate it, it was gone. Yeah. <laughs> and then you came along. <laughs> and if I got went there the first time this couple of weeks ago. And um, my gosh, that is a place. I mean, there is everything there but a bed. Maybe that's there too. I don't know. Yeah, it's a really cool place. I love it. You know, I got the little bar room there with. You can do karaoke there or the singer songwriter showcase there. Then you got the, the pinball room with the video games. Got another room with the pool table. Then we got the main concert room. That's huge. <laughs> All right. And well, uh, one, I mean, we're getting close to our time here. We spent almost spent an hour. It was an easy chat, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, I love it. Time moves fast. So the last thing, you know, there are there are people like like Lynn uh, who have used or been part of bands that use bookers. But for some of us who are just starting out, how could, what do we need to look for? And how would we, how would we pick a booker? Why would, I mean, other than you, of course, but you know, what, what are the things that we should be looking for? Well, um, honestly, well, I, I hope get them good. That's the, that's the thing I hope. To get them on the show and help promote them, mm -hmm. and help them, you know. <laughs> I mean, if I was going to look for a, for a, a different booker, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but if yeah. I did, um, if I was going to look for a, a different booker, like say 
for instance, I had a band I want to tour overseas. <laughs> Not likely, but you never know. Anyway, how would I find a booker that, uh, how, how would I go about that? As a booker, you should know what bookers. I really don't know. Just contact the club, I guess, and they tell you who's booking there. Ah. Or if the, the booker reaches out to the person, yeah, then. Well, I think uh, we're right right about it at the end of our line here. we got about six mm-hmm. minutes left, <laughs> and I've enjoyed it. Uh, okay. you're quite, quite a game. Everybody have a good time. <laughs> rock, and, rock and roll, man. Thank um, you for those who are, you know, that uh, logged in and checked out the streaming. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell me, now that you, um, at least one of you, Stephanie is your assistant, correct? Stephanie Hall. Yeah. Well, yeah, she works with me. She's also my girlfriend. Oh, yeah. okay. She works with me on stuff, yeah. All right. So how how would my people contact you, and how can I get your, your um, you know, all this advertisement that you're putting out there? i like you to put it on my show, Matured Musicians. So when okay. things come up, do put that on there. Stephanie can do it, or you could do it. It doesn't matter. Whoever's a member <laughs> and yeah, has a yeah. Um, so that our, our people who look through this stuff know what's going on. Yeah, I will. Yeah, how, how, do they get you? how do we find, how do our, how do our listeners find you? I mean, you found me, but how did, how would they well, find My you? Facebook page is McMillan Shorty, M-C-M-I-L-L-E-N Shorty, S-H-O-R-T-Y. My email is shortyparty at gmail.com. All right. I'll make sure if if uh, you could get maybe Stephanie can send me something um, that has that on it or whatever that I can mm-hmm. post, maybe a video yeah. or something that would help. And that they can take and look you up and hear what you have to say, guy. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. And I um I don't know. I hate to close. We're a little bit early. I hate to close without asking you, uh, how long do you think you're going to be doing this, Shorty? Probably until I die. <laughs> <laughs> I love music. I just can't stop. I love it. I've been doing it for over like 32 years. So, <laughs> Absolutely. And I give him a recommendation, anybody out there. I think Shorty's a great guy. And I think he, he's fair. So I'd say work with them. And there's always going to be people who don't don't like whatever. Sure. You I know, never please everybody. So. That's <laughs> part of the business, right? Well, do, but just can't. <laughs> okay. Well, do want to thank you again for being on our show. Maybe sometime in thank the you. future when there's some other event that you'd like, just contact me and we'll see if we can put you back on again. Heck yeah. All thank right. You. Have That's a good time. time. Thank you. Bye. So Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, Shorty. <laughs> Have a good day. Well, that, that wraps up our our, um, our interview for today. I want to thank you all for joining us. Always, without you, there would be no show. Without you, there would be no music. So please stay tuned and uh, find out about the business. And if you're part of it, great. Just anything you would like to do, let me know. Anyway, this is Joyce Lingerie at Matured Musicians Group signing off. Have a good rest of your day and a stellar weekend. Bye-bye, everybody. Why is my button not working? (laughs) 